What's happening, guys? Welcome back. Now, here's the deal. May 20th. Check your clock. Check your calendars. That could be a matter of hours away. Live and free, 6 o'clock Eastern. Eagle FC is going down only on the FlexCast app. You want to make it real easy? Go to EagleFC.com right now and get signed up. All right, we got Khabib, we got Kamara, we got Henry. I'm Chael P, and we're going to take a little trip around the horn of MMA Khabib. Let's start with you. I got to tell you. I'm a fan. I am a fight fan. I watch everything on TV fight related. I have not turned my TV on and watched MMA in a period of time without seeing you. My sense is you are busier now as a coach trainer and a promoter than you ever were as a fighter. Am I close? Yeah, it's like right now it's like I'm more busy than I was active athlete. You know, I have uh, so many guys around me. I have to take care of them. You know, I have uh, Eagle FC. I have to uh, travel around the world everywhere, you know, and uh, yeah. It's a little bit busy. And what's that like emotionally? I mean, you're in very opposite roles. When you're a fighter, you've got to be selfish. When you're a coach, you've got to be selfless. Like when your guys <laughs> are in there and competing, do you feel something different than when it was you yourself? You know, it's like, of course, I feel different because uh, when I was fighting by myself, I can, I can fix anything inside the cage. But, you know, it's like when you're outside and your close friend or brother inside the cage, you know, and you just have to talk, you know, you cannot do nothing, it's like a little bit hard, you know. Sure. It's, yeah, and, uh, and Chuck, and I, I, it's crazy, you know, you talk about like the commitment of a coach, like I literally got in this morning pretty, fairly, fairly early, 5.30, I'm at the lobby, who do I see? <laughs> I see, you know, I see, I see Khabib, you know, he's helping his brothers cut weight, so. They talk about dedication. The dude is, the dude is dedicated. I, you know, me waking up at 5.30, I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. And Kamar, I got to talk to you real fast because I saw a picture of you. It was on the internet. Now, I'm going back about two months, but you just had surgery. Your hand was wrapped up. There has been uh, the worst rumor in MMA is that you're going to be fighting with Leon Edwards, but we haven't gotten a date. Are we closer to that? I mean, it's, it's crazy now because it's, you know, I never really take time off to do anything. And so now that I'm forced to, it's, and especially with the year that I had last year, it's almost like, you know, the, the fans and the, the media and the public are just kind of, they're entitled to, to me being in there next week, next month. And so I, I'm seeing all these news everywhere, which is why I stay off the internet nowadays of, oh, you're fighting in, in June. Oh, you're fighting in July. Oh, you're fighting this month. No, the biggest thing for me right now is to make sure I want to be able to step in there and fight healthy and be able to get more and more fights in. Because if I don't do it now, I go in there too soon, I hurt myself. Now I'm out for an even longer period of time or my, the longevity of my career might be cut short. So now I'm just listening to the doctors and they're saying a couple more weeks and I might be able to start actually throwing the hand the way I want to throw the hand. And, and then I'll go from there, but no official date yet. But you know, Dana, they seem to like Leon Edwards. I seem to like Leon Edwards. You know, the world seems to like Leon Edwards right now for the first time, and uh, so hopefully we'll do it. All right, so nothing's changed. I mean, I didn't miss something within that answer. Your hand is healed. It is going to be Leon, and we don't yet have a date. Do I get that right? Hand's almost healed. All right, excellent. A couple more weeks. Excellent. And, Henry, if I can move over to you, you made some news back in the USADA pool looking for an opponent. We getting any closer on that? Of course, but I've been inspired here at Eagle FC, you know, watching these guys, you know, throw blood on us like that last time, Chell. You know, so there's a lot of good options, but I'm coming back. I'm reclaiming my crown. And I'm going up again. I'm taking. A, I'm taking somebody else's crown too. All right. So I'm greedy. I'm a gold digger. Gold <laughs> I channel. love it. I'm no, I love it. Digger. All right, guys. Let's let's get into this. I got to tell you, there's always been talk in MMA about the size of the cage. I don't know anything about it. I don't know a big cage from a small cage. I don't know anything about it. However, for the first time, I'm changing my tune because this is a tight cage, and we are going to go in a main event with Junior Dos Santos and Jorgen De Castro. They are literally two and a half steps away from each other. If they both take two and a half steps, we're meeting right here, and all hell could break loose tomorrow night. Khabib, what do you think of this main event? You know, it's like, I think a lot of people underestimate Jorgen. I think, you know, and uh, I think it's tomorrow night they're gonna give hard fight for Junior Dos Santos because he can fight, he can punch, you know, he has very heavy, heavy hands, you know, and he has very good uh, submission game, you know. We, everybody <coughs> see what he did last fight inside the, this cage, you know, how he choked out his opponent, you know. And I think he's going to give very hard fight for Junior Dos Santos. We saw Jorgen uh, two months ago right here. We did a press conference and he faced off with Junior. I will tell you at the weigh-ins this morning, De Castro looks like a very different person. I would guess he's down close to 25 to 30 pounds, which I, th I think speaks to the dedication and how serious he's taken this opportunity. Yeah, it's like yesterday I was talking with him. He said this is like most... Uh, 
important fight in his life, you know. And he understand this is very big opportunity for him, you know. And he told me like he he's not gonna lose this fight, you know, no way. And you know his opponent is like is like big name, one of the one of the biggest name on this game, you know, Junior dos Santos, former UFC heavyweight champion, you know. He was he was couple years he was like face of the game, you know, like ten years ago. And it's very interesting fight. And Khabib, really. there was a report that came out today. The Associated Press was talking about a meeting, a rumored meeting between you and Scott Coker coming up to discuss a possibility of Junior Dos Santos versus Fedor. Is this rumor true? Yeah, yesterday we talked with him. I talked with him is with uh, Scott Coker. Next week I'm going to be in uh, San Jose. Help for my guys uh, in training camp. And of course I'm going to meet with him and we're going to talk about this. First of all, we have to watch what's going to happen Friday night here in Eagle FC. And if Junior Dos Santos show us his great performance, we're going to sit and talk. We're going to sit like uh, talk about like some serious business. You know? Excellent. And Kamara, I got to tell you, when you were making your run, you were back on the Ultimate Fighter. You had a dream of getting in and getting your name in the lights. Junior Dos Santos was a champion of the world. So I know you've watched this guy. I know you at some point you even admired this guy. What do you think about him coming back, making his return, doing it here in Eagle FC? It's, it's amazing just to be able to watch that because it, it's, there's somewhere in a, in a contender's journey to where you have to run into that big dog, the alpha that's been there for a while, that's been at the top of the mountain. And you have to show, you got, you got to establish yourself as I've arrived on the scene. You have to be able to step in there and knock off that big dog. And that's what Jorgen is, is attempting to do. Because now we look at, you know, towards the end of junior, uh, JDS's career, you know, with uh, the UFC, it, it almost kind of seemed like he didn't necessarily want to be there anymore. You know, he, he took a couple of losses that, you know, you know, people might underestimate him now or think that, okay, he might not be that guy. But from what we've seen lately from him, he's reinvigorated, he's rejuvenated, he wants to be in here, he, he's excited about competing again. So I think you're gonna, that's, a, that's a tall glass of water for anybody to sure. drink, being able to step in there with the JDS because he looks refocused, and if he's anything like the JDS that we're used to seeing, I think he's, he's got a second life on his career. And Henry, let's talk about Kamara's point. You're a coach, now you're a trainer. If you're working with JDS and you understand he's got four losses, this isn't a physical battle, this is a mental battle. How are you going to advise him coming to this match with the Oregon? Oh, I think the biggest thing is experience. I think the time that he's put in the octagon. Obviously, uh, Giro Dos Santos has put in, I mean, he's got hours and hours like in the octagon, which is crazy. And I think he needs to use a lot of that. You know, he's going up against, but the, to me, like, there's so many storylines to this because what about, you know, De Castro? He ends sure. up winning. You know, he's, he, to me, he, I told him today during fight meetings, like, this is a Rocky Balboa. He comes out, he beats him. Like, it puts him in a really good category to eventually fight for the Eagle FC belt. But not just that, Junior Dos Santos wins. I mean, you're talking about cross promotion. You're talking about Eagle FC cross promoting with Bellator. To me, that's the most exciting part because I think it's it's a new trade. It's a new trend that could potentially happen where MMA could just become officially become just one. And see, I'm glad that you brought that up because I asked Khabib about it. We set that down and walked away. That is a big deal. If Khabib is going to get together with Scott Coker and they're going to try to find, I mean, is it going to be in Bellator? Is it going to be an Eagle? We got a lot of questions here. What do you think about this, Kamara? What should I, they do? I love it. I love it because it. It's something to be said about being number one across the board. Knowing that you are the fastest human on the planet across the board, that's undisputed. There's something to be said about that. And so to have one champion, one guy across the board that is the man at the top of the mountain, I mean, that, there's something to be said about that. I'm excited. I can't wait for Bellator, Eagle, UFC, you know, AKO, it doesn't matter. Sure, I can't cool. wait for the, this promotion. Well, it doesn't have to stop with Fedor and DeCastro, by no. the way. I mean, if you're over there talking to him, let's see what Benson Henderson's up to. Let's see, let's see what McKee's up to. I mean, right, let's get a few guys on the table, I would imagine. You know, it's like, we'll you want to play this one close to the vest? Am I digging, <laughs> am I digging to it? There are a lot of things I want to know. I mean, if you pull, if you He's pull like, up the hey, first hey, coat hey, promote, this is going to hey, be fascinating. <laughs> oh, it's huge. I mean, you, you know why, though, uh, real quick, Khabib, is because th this man is well-respected. Sure. You know, he's a, he's a very well-respected man where he can call Dana, he can call Dana, he can call Dana, he can call Scott Coker, he can call anybody in the roster that will all pick up that call and will be interested in what is it that he has to offer. And I think that's what, that's, that's the... The greatest of what Ego FC is, we have a great leader 
that's going to be able to put these fights together that can create something that's going to just build a gap between all these guys that we, you know, we can fight against each other. Sure. We really can. Yeah. And Khabib, how much of a look can you give us behind the curtain on this, this meeting with you and Scott Coker? You know, it's like, uh, we just need <coughs> Fader <laughs> from, <laughs> from Bellator, you know. <laughs> and of course, like, first of all, we have to talk with Bellator, like with Scott Cooker, and I think we have very good offer from uh, Saudi Arabia. Maybe we can make this end of the this year in Jeddah or Riyadh, somewhere like in middle of desert, you know. Sure. And uh, we have a couple very good locations. We have here Miami, we have Moscow, we have uh, Saudi Arabia, Riyadh or Jeddah, and you know, it's like, uh, and uh, of course, we have good relationship um, between me and Scott Cooker. And uh, we have Fedor, we have J, uh, Junior Dos Santos, we have everything. We just have to bring everything together and uh, just let all fans around the world en enjoy. Excellent, excellent. My interpretation of what was just said is that we are going to go to this meeting, but we're looking to get uh, Fedor over here. Is that is that what we're hearing? That, that sounds That's right for now? Like. All right. I, I like it. <laughs> I do too. Can you imagine, I do too. Can you imagine having Fedor fight? I, I would actually like it in this arena. It's Honestly, special. I, this, this arena is so cool, man. You, you can feel the punches. You can hear the yeah. noises. I mean, like I said, we had blood spill all over us that uh, yes. last event. I mean. There is something special, though, when Fedor comes in. I'm I, just thinking I with, these, with these heavyweights, man, they're uh, two steps away before they freaking hit each other. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's crazy. All right, co-main event, guys. And I'd love to tee this one up uh, just because it's Hector Lombard. If there's anybody that I feel story did not get a fair shake, it's Hector Lombard. At one point in his career, he was 22 straight wins. And I remember people trying to dismiss him or trying to say that he didn't have hard opponents. I remember going 22 training camps, 22 weigh-ins, and 22 fights, and he won them all. Give this guy his due. Now, he did a lot of his better work at 170. He eventually moved up to 185. That's very relevant because tomorrow night, he's going to be at 205 with a very legitimate light heavyweight in Tiago Santos. Khabib? Oh, about this fight, I'm very exciting because I think someone gonna go sleep, you know, in first round. This is my prediction. First round, yes. Uh, in first round, I think someone gonna sleep and, uh, you know, and uh, same time, we have very interesting fight for uh, Gector Lombard after this fight, you know, because we have one more fight uh, contract with Alexander Schlemenka. They fight 10 years ago, they already fight each other in Bellator uh, middleweight title, you know. They have big story and uh, they both have contract with us and it's going to be very interesting. Even tomorrow night, like uh, Friday night here in Eagle FC and in future, end of the year, I really want to make this fight, you know. And come on. See, see, this is what, this is when you start putting on the promoter hat here. Because I'm, <laughs> looking in, in a, I'm you're looking ahead because I, I'm starting to be in this room yeah. as well. So when you're like, he's already planning, okay, we've got this going on, this going on. That That's amazing, you know, and I, I think it's a, it's a tremendous fight because I've, I've had the pleasure of actually training with Tiago uh, Silva, growing up in the sport and actually seeing this man, you know, go through the ups and downs of, of MMA. And he's a guy that's he's a very, very game opponent. Tiago's not going away slowly. And so you actually have to put him away or he's gonna be there all night. And, and you can ask any training partner that he trained with. He, he was one of the hardest workers and the guys that's in there. He's willing to push you. You know, I mean, it, it, I've never had the pleasure of training with Hector Lombard, but I've heard some stories. Yeah. <laughs> We've all heard stories. And so I think this is going to be a fantastic fight. I, I, I want to say I agree with what Habib is saying because both guys come to fight each and every time, and both guys were always those guys to where they knew that we're, we're front runners. Right. We got to get, we got to, you know, we have an after party, you know, in, in an hour. So we got to make sure we get this fight over with as quick <laughs> as possible so we can get there. Specifically 205 pounds though. I mean, Hector's going to be giving up some reach and I don't, you know, I, you talk about cardio. I don't think Hector gets tired, but I do think he uses the majority of his energy in the first round. I don't think he manages <laughs> his energy well, right? Well, that's, that's well what said. I would say. That right, is he well just said. He puts his foot down, that's he comes well out there. And if the second round comes around, he's not, he's not quite the same guy. At 205 pounds, does Hector have the power that's going to be necessary if he's got to get him out of here? I think he's, I mean, the power is power. When you're, when you're a guy like that, when you're that short, compact, I think he's, the power is always going to be there. I think Hector's one of those guys, if a Hector hits a rhino at the right spot, it's falling over. Sure. So I think they both have the power, but I just think that Tiago's a little more used to being up at 205. 
to where Hector is not necessarily used to it. But Hector knows if I can, I got I got a first round. If I can get in there and I can land that shot, I'm knocking this guy down. And Henry, we're, we're sitting here talking about our analysis from watching these guys, but these guys used to be teammates. They yeah. trained together every day for three years. That's yeah. the way the story's been told to us. What can they gain from each other with that experience? Well, I, I remember actually being at ATT, and I was out there for like a month, but a lot of people don't know that, like when I started my MMA. And I remember those were the two guys that nobody kind of wanted to go with because they were just like, it was, <laughs> they didn't give you a hell to hold that <laughs> sure. class. Like, all of the above. And I think, uh, I think that's what, I think they respect each other, but they also know that they're both, you know, they're both willing to throw out the kitchen sink in whatever situation sure. may happen. Man, we, we might even need some security guards out here but uh man it, it, it's an interesting fight and, and, and i i go back to like i think about hector because obviously he's, he's a shorter man he's gonna really have to use his grapplers i think that's know? right and because don't forget he was an olympian in judo but he doesn't do a lot of grappling i'm glad you brought that up yeah and the other thing too is you have, we have to keep in mind is tiago T, you know tiago he, he trains with a tyron spunk i mean how much you know when you train with an elite stand-up fighter like that how much better are you going to get and i know that uh that's just that's I'm curious to see what the, what the outcome is going to be. All right, guys, those are our two big ones that everybody's looking forward to. But we got a stack card top to bottom. I mean, 6 o'clock Eastern tomorrow night. Some fights are going to break off. Khabib, is there anybody you're specifically looking forward to? <laughs> Honestly, I'm, like, very exciting about Daryl Horcher. He's going to fight versus Ahmed Ali. You fought him. Yes. You fought him one time. What's that I story? Fight, I, I fought with him here in Florida. Uh, I supposed to fight with uh, Tony Ferguson. And, like, nine days before fight, Tony get injured and uh, I remember like it was it was Thursday it was Thursday UFC called me I was in uh, my grappling practice in at the K next Saturday I supposed to fight versus Tony Ferguson they called me they say Tony is out we have opponent for you I'm like and they told me his name is Daryl Horcher I'm like okay I watch he was like uh, in a local show Walter Way champion and he come to lightweight and it was his first fight in UFC. Yeah. Of course I finish him but I'm very excited <laughs> about his yeah. about his uh, fight fight the night here because he have uh, opponent very tough opponent very exciting striker Ahmed Aliyev. I know him I trained with him long time you know, a couple of years in Dagestan, and uh, it's going to be a very good fight, you know. And Kamar, for you, what fights going under the radar are you looking forward to? Man, I, I, there's a lot of great fights on this car, a lot of UFC vets. These are guys that have been at the highest level. For me, I, there's a couple of fights. Uh, obviously, my buddy Sean Bunch on here, but uh, Sean Soriano. I mean, this is a, a training partner of mine, a guy that, I've, I've, that has watched me throughout the progression of my MMA career, and I've watched come in to his own and, and I mean this is he's one of the most talented strikers I've ever seen and I've seen some talented strikers I mean we've, we've got Tyrone Spawn and yeah I, sure. but Sean Soriano is one of the best strikers I've ever seen and what do you know about Sean's and, opponent uh, he, he's taking on Paulo Paulo Silva okay. you know also trains down here at MMA Masters those guys do a tremendous job of, of preparing their guys for fights as as I know I, I fought Kobe Covington my last fight and and, and he was trained over at MMA Masters, and you know, as you saw the result, it was just a unanimous decision, and not a, you know, I didn't break his face this time. Sure. So <laughs> you know, that 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 goes to show how they prepare their guys. They really prepare these guys. But Sean Soriano is, is you know, after taking a step back now again from the UFC, I mean, he's about to become a dad, a father, and so there's something that does something to you. It's a different switch that you have to make mentally of how you go out there and, and you uh, approach your career and everything that you're doing. So I, I'm excited for that fight. I can't wait to see him put on a striking display. And Harry, what one are you looking forward to? Man, I'm, to, I'm gonna have to go with uh, Sean Bunch, you know, my, my, uh, my Olympic teammate, uh, you know, the guy that I spent probably the most time in my uh, elite career wrestling, you know, a, a, Olympic, uh, Olympic, Olympic alternate, um, NCAA finalist. Sean Bunch is kind of like the guy, he's actually one of the most decorated wrestlers like in mixed martial arts like now, like till today. And he's only getting better. Obviously, we saw him fight here uh, the, the last uh, Eagle FC, and he, he continues to keep showing improvement. 
And I think if Sean Bunch can continue to keep getting better with the striking, with the wrestling that he has, I think he can beat anybody in the world. All right, so you were a teammate with Sean Bunch. You're a fellow wrestler. You were a teammate with Sean yes, Bunch. Him. Let me be critical of Sean because he is one of the best athletes in MMA. I will go that far. His record has surprised me, and his ups and downs have surprised me. Yeah. What am I missing? Because when I look at Sean, I go, okay, that's the guy you don't want to deal with. But he's had trouble putting everything together from time to time. Only one thing is here, like age. He's 39 years old, <laughs> you know. 39? Yeah. Wow. Today I asked him, how old are you, Sean? <laughs> because you look like 24, you know. <laughs> He's like, I'm 39. I said, no way. <laughs> he says, yes, I'm 39 years old. Yeah, he would it's be, like, wouldn't he? Because when he was an alternate for the Olympic team, that was yeah. 2012. God, time flies. Sean, oh, Sean, 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 no, 2008. 2008. 2008. 2008. Oh, and 12, because I was thinking we lost to Coleman. Olympic alternate. Yeah. Okay. He lost, he lost to uh, Mike Zadek. Okay. And then, uh, and then Coleman and Scott. Coleman. Honestly, on 12, he don't don't, he didn't lose. No, it the, was the, it, bullshit was decision. Yeah, it I was a very bad decision. I, I was just there. check, check I this. I, I, this watch him, man. I'm curious. Yeah. To see it, it blows. It blows my mind that even though he's 30, we, none of us knew he was 39. He still moves yeah. like a 22, 24 <laughs> yeah. year old, <laughs> yeah. know, which is which is. Uh, so he's a superb athlete. I think it's just kind of been a foundation of of his career because you know some guys just jump into MMA and they just have to run with it you know to where some guys strategically start from learning the basics whether it's kickboxing whether it's the things that we didn't know as wrestlers and so I, I think just maybe a little bit ups and downs in that in that realm has kind of hindered it a little bit but you see Sean every time he steps in here there's not a person that I can say Sean can't stay in there with when it comes to competing. So I think it's maybe clean up a little bit of though and just focus in a little bit more. But I mean, Sean is a tremendous athlete for 39 years old. I don't know many 39 that can say that better That's athlete than Sean Bunch. And I'd love to give a shout out to the fans uh, for Ronnie Marks. Now in full disclosure, he's a teammate of mine, but I've never seen a guy with worse luck. Ronnie Marks went overseas. We're all training in Portland. He goes overseas to Brazil to do a fight. He comes home, there was no fight. The fight got canceled. I was at a Bellator three years ago in Hawaii. He's in the back. He's going to be the main event with Josh Barnett. They come out, they cancel the fight. It never happened. The last Eagle FC, Ronnie Marks was on. And just before bell time, that fight got canceled. So, I mean, I got to tell you, if bad luck follows anybody, it's this guy. But he's as strong as they come. He's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, trained by Andre Pettineris. Ronnie Marks is something special. And I... I want to be on record. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, of course, man. There's so many great cards, Uncle Chow, that it's 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 great. And I think the matchmaking that Ego SC has done has been has I mean it's, it has been entertaining. It's been a treat for us. There hasn't been one boring fight. We're gonna see a lay and pray type fight. And I tell you this as a wrestler. You know, <laughs> what are you so, trying to say? Why did you look over this way when you said that? <laughs> well, because we're all wrestlers, right? Well, actually, we're all wrestlers. Right? We're all sure. laying prayers at one point. Sure. At one point, but no, but that, the sport has evolved, and, and, and just the matchmaking that has been done at Eagle FC has put, you know, has put, on, has put Eagle FC to the next level that it's, it's slowly climbing them ranks. Man. For like, sure. Everybody watch out. All right, guys. Thank you all for hanging out with us a little bit, but I got one surprise for you, and it's not about the big fight tomorrow. It's not that it's live and free. All you got to do is get the FlexCast or sign up now at EagleFC.com, but I'm only going to tell you tomorrow. See you guys then, 6 o'clock Eastern on the FlexCast app.